All right. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to the October um, Act Interest Group meeting. I am glad to sort of see everyone here. Um, so for today, um, the first thing we're going to do on our agenda is we have Andrea here. She's going to give us a little bit of a tour around the work that's being done on invoices, on angularizing invoices um, by Equinox. So we're going to get to see that. And then there's not a whole lot of bugs um, that have had a lot of activity since our last meeting, but we can touch on those and then whatever you guys want to talk about after that. So, um, Andrea, are you ready to go or do you want me to yeah. talk about something for a minute? <laughs> okay. No, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to rock and roll. <laughs> okay. All right. So let me stop sharing. Okay. Um, sharing. Okay. All right. You, you should start be good. sharing. Yep. Um, okay. Um, just verifying that y'all can see my screen. Yes, I can. And it's, it's a sign in. All right. Um, and why does it always do this? All right. Sorry, I don't use Zoom a ton. So um, I'm trying to tile it so I can see chat uh, as well as my notes. Okay. I think I've got it down. All right. Cool. Um, so thanks for inviting me, uh, Tiffany. And for I'm pretty sure that all of you know me, but I'm, for those of you who don't, I'm uh, Andrea von Steinman. I'm a project manager for software development at Equinox. And um, I'm going to show you guys the latest in many rounds of um, acquisitions angularization work that we've done sponsored by Evergreen Community Development Initiative and prior to that to MassLink. Um, so in addition to invoices, Sprint B also did um, some stuff with claims. So I'll show you that real quickly too. And because you guys are the ACK experts and I am not, um, my tactic here is I'm going to show you just, you know, some invoices, invoice examples that I have set up in this test system and show you um, some of the new features and like the, what the new interface looks like rather than step through like really detailed workflows. If there is something that you specifically want me to see or want me to show you, uh, please drop it in the chat and I will do my best to recreate that workflow. Um, but this is a test system and we are also still doing um, some of the last bits of bug fixing um, on this with ECDI with our test uh, and funding partners there. So just be aware that this is not the final polished version, but it's I think in a, a close enough state to show you guys and I'm, I'm pretty excited about how it looks. So I'm glad that we're gonna get to show you. So I am logged in uh, as an, um, ACK admin here. And the first, nope, I'm not going to click on the Evergreen Wiki. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is invoice 20. And I'm going to type it correctly. Okay. So this is um, what the new Angular inter invoice interface uh, looks like. So you can see we've got up at the top is um, our summary information. Um, and various payment information, things like that. Um, we also have this total bill and total paid. And then once the uh, invoice is closed, you'll see a summary here of the funds um, that were that were used for this. And in this case, this one um, is just this is this is my easy example. So everything has been received. Um, this should look familiar. It's the same. Um, kind of layout as as in selection lists and purchase orders, angular selection list and purchase orders. Um, we have uh, all the line items here. You can see where there's multiple line items. It maths out uh, the price per item for you there. Um, there's no fund warnings or overages, which if there were, we would see highlighted here um, in either yellow or red. And I have an example to show you of that later. Um, and down here is where our direct uh, charges. So I am gonna show you that so I can show prorate. So on this system, I know that the handling charge is a proratable charge um, and we do have um, multiple funds here. So this first line item is in A books and all the others are in A and FIC. So um, 
going to just do $10 for easy math. And you can see that actually automated, uh, automatically updated to paid when I typed 10 and build. And it will do the same for all these build and paid ones up here. And I'm going to click prorate. And that updated it and um, divided it according to the, the amounts in each of the funds. So you can see it prorated it between those two funds. And now this all one all looks good up here. Now the direct charges, you can see that their summary is already on there. And then once I close it, that will update to show all the rest of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this and the screen will refresh. And we can now see that this is our fund summary total of what we spent on this invoice. And if you needed to reopen the invoice, um, you could do that there. So that's my first very easy example. Uh, any questions so far? Um, Andrea, when you yeah. added the direct charge, mm -hmm. it looked like the fund was a clickable field. Because uh, I want to say, and somebody else with that, correct me if I'm wrong, that right now, if you choose a direct, or sorry, if you choose a proratable, that fund uh you can't do anything if you've chosen okay. one that's proratable. Does that is that right, Tiffany? Yeah, I think I think you're right. That might be an open bug still. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, like I said, this is still a demo yep. system. Is I, I'm sorry for interrupting. I was going to interrupt you in a, in a chat message, Andrea, but now I'm not going to. I'm just going to do it out loud. Um, was there anything that you wanted me? to uh, tag into here. Uh, th there are some open bugs, as Andrea said, on this right now in terms of bug fixing for this development. No, um, just write stuff down that I shouldn't forget maybe. <laughs> well, what I was gonna say is we, we have an unfolding uh, inner system transiting tragedy going on right now. And right. so I was, gonna, I was gonna peace out for a second, but if I could sure. rely on um, either Jennifer or um, Tiffany and or uh, maybe to gather that information and then um, share it. I would appreciate it if possible. Okay. Yep. Actually, okay. I also see that looking, I have I have people here too. Uh, so Stephanie, can I deputize you to write these things down for me, please? Gotcha. Like check <laughs> that check that funds is not clickable <laughs> when prorating or something like that. Got it. Thank you. I also made a note of that bad red color on the blue highlight. That was gross. Yeah, and anything that you that you personally are, are, are oh, for offended, the fund offended by, yeah, yeah, and that offends my sensibilities. There are, um, there are most of the bugs that are still open are like kind of these ticky tacky interface things too. Mm -hmm. Not that those aren't important, but like that's just so as we're going through this. If you guys notice anything like that, it's probably already bugged. But feel free to mention it anyway. Okay, next invoice. It looks really cool overall. Thanks. Or well, I I should I'm accepting that compliment on behalf of Stephanie, who is the reason Absolutely. why it looks cool. So thank you, Stephanie. I like it too. Um okay. So this next next example, um, I'm just gonna show you could that uh detach, because detach works a little bit differently now too. Um so this uh my um amazing titles here. Um, as you can see, I had a volume of Shakespeare on my desk when I was writing this. <laughs> um, this shows um, three things that are received um, and one that wasn't. So for purposes of this invoice, I'm going to say, I'm going to detach that, um, that one here. So we're going to detach. And you can see it gives you this kind of dotted and highlighted thing, but it's pending until I save it. So this is I have to save for this to fully detach itself, but that's letting you know that this has been detached and when you save it, you know, it'll it'll update that. Down here, you can see um, some of the styling for, this is a fund that is uh, warned at not stop. Uh, this is a fund that is at a, excuse me, at its warning percentage, but not at its stop percentage. That's letting you know that that is, you know, warned there. Um, and yeah, I note Ruth's comment there about the lightness of that contrast. And we're also, these also need icons, um, which is a different, a different bug. This, this 
uh, Half Year Equinox has been the story of the bizarrely intersecting projects. So there is like this thing over here and this thing over here and those interact with these two projects, but not a third. And like, it's been a little bit to keep track of. So they're, they're all going in the right direction, but sometimes not all at the same time is the moral of that story. But the, the nice thing about bizarrely interacting projects is that there's a point where that yes. can actually be efficient. <laughs> yeah. And so. and I think that once all of these get to the community, y'all are going to be thrilled with them. But Stephanie is correct that we have like three different things involving warning and stop colors, um, grids. Like there's so many different like pieces of grids and happening. Yeah. It's there is an efficiency and it's one point we will reach the singularity of all of these items. And then have a style guide. Ooh, anyway. Oh God, the style guide. Yes, the style guide. Anyway, I'm going to save this invoice so you can see that it updates. And that thing that I detached is now no longer there. Yay. Um, and so if I wanted to add a new direct charge, I'm going to show you what the um, stopped account looks like. So I'm just going to say processing fee. And yes, we know that we hate that blue on red. But for purposes of this example, I'm going to pick that because um, we know that red indicates that it is at a stop percent. And I wanted to show you, let's pretend that this is it doesn't even have to be twenty dollars. It could be two dollars. But um, and if I click save here, it's going to pop up this warning that says uh, the following funds exceed their balance stop percent threshold. Adult fiction. So that is it's not even going to let you do it. You just you can't overwrite it. You click OK, and it won't let you save while that's there. So anyway, I'm going to remove that. Um, the delete of the direct charges works kind of similarly um, to the um, to the detach where it gives you this styling and it changes that to undelete and showing you that this will be deleted and then you know you click save um, and it goes away and if you wanted to edit your direct charge you could do that here um, and let's say I want to move this out of the warrant account into here. And it gives you this little help text that tells you this is not safe yet. You need to save this. It's still going to the other fund. So, you know, I save that and it moved to the other fund. And to show you what it does, if I put it in a warrant fund. Oh, I guess. Oh, that's right. Because that's a bug. Haha. -ha. It worked. It works on my items, but not yet for that. See, I'm, I'm getting my own bugs. Um, okay, so let's see. I'm going to close this one now because we're done with that. And again, the summary updates to show you where your money went. I have a question, um, I guess maybe for Stephanie. Um, because I don't really, I know there's supposed to be like some meanings to like button colors and stuff. Does, does it matter that there, there's a lot of yellow? Is that a cool thing? I don't really know. No, but I'm going to fix that globally rather than trying to do it just in part of ag. Yeah. I gotcha. Stephanie that, hates well, yellow buttons. <laughs> is that like, is that like submit buttons or like a certain color versus like, how does that work? It's been really up to the developers and it's been pretty random. We're going to be standardizing that fairly soon. Um, that is part of our UI interest group style guide project. So that's my pitch for coming to that group. Okay, cool. Yeah. And it's because like things like red and yellow have contexts of like warning and um, we're using them a lot for success mm -hmm. buttons. And so that's going to be addressed comprehensively um and then there's something about if some of you have seen stephanie's presentations on this it's further complicated by the fact that default button class colors in bootstrap also run into a lot of the um kind of contrast issues like the one that, like the ones that ava noted um which is a whole other wrinkle to buttons yeah we've been thinking a lot about buttons too lately <laughs> Okay, cool. Yeah, but good question so far. Thanks, everyone. Um, um, Andrea, a question about the fund summary. Mm -hmm. Is that the total summary or is it 
um, like including the line items and the charges? Yes. I, okay. I know Evergreen breaks it out in some other places. So that the four ninety nine is this the direct charge, and the forty five is the three fifteen dollar line items, and then the total is forty nine ninety nine. So Perfect. these this represents the line items, which all excuse me happen to be paid on the same account, and then this is the direct charge which is on a separate account. Um, and I'm assuming there's warnings if you change or. It, is there a warning if you delete a charge that is has been prorated? That's a good question. Let's because I out. know there currently is. Let's... I don't know that it's the most intuitive text right now. <laughs> um, I'm, um, where did I do prorates? I think you did one on twenty. Yeah, no, I I got you. I'm just looking at my notes. <laughs> Let's find out. Delete. Nope. It just lets you do it. And it doesn't update the program. <laughs> so that's another one for the list. Um, and again, like it, it, we are past the bug reporting period for the partner testing here. So the things that are easy to fix, like we will try to pick up, but we're not necessarily going to be able to fix every single one of these um, mm -hmm. on our way out the door. So just, you know, incremental progress. Okay. Um, let's go back to 19. And I want to show you how it'll block me from renaming something. So and this wording is before you tell me that this wording is unfriendly. We know um, that is, and I do know that that is an open bug because I actually just looked at this yesterday um, while I was writing this up. So this gives you, um, it will not let you save that because that is in use with another invoice. Um, so put it back to order 19, which it was. And in this case, we have unreceived line items, um, And I am going to just receive them. So from here, we do have our regular um, receive and unreceive actions here and claim policy. So I'm going to mark them all as received and it refreshes and yay, everything is received. Um, and I'm going to put my, now this does not have prices on it. Um, so let's show that. And you'll see as I put these, it'll copy them over to the paid field. I'm just after a, a brief pause, so. Okay. And then we've got our total here and it looks like it's all in one fund. So when I save this and close it, <clears throat> It will just be in the one fund. So that one's, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, but I also want to show you guys, uh, there is another way to receive, batch receive, which we've changed a little bit. And I'm going to show you that. Not next, but next after next. Um, this is where I'm going to show you um, some, some warning pop-ups here. So We have um, let's see. I thought this was going to show. Hmm. I thought this was one of my warned funds. I guess not. Oh, well, well, I was going to show you the cool warning pop-ups. Um, 
I thought this was one with with warned funds here, but it's not. I must have written, written down the wrong number, so my apologies. Um, if I can dig one up, I will show you that. But basically, if you change, um, if you try to add a charge or try to change the line item and the funds is warned in that yellow state, it will show you a pop-up. But if you have the correct permission, which this account does, to let you click through and do that anyway. Um, if you try to put an amount that would exceed the stop percentage, um, it will stop you as you guys saw earlier with the direct charge. Um, but I didn't write down the correct example, so, oh well. All right, um, we'll skip this one. I'm gonna create a new invoice now so I can show um, batch receive. So let's see. And I'm going to do this for Baker and Taylor. That's fine for now. Um, first, I'm going to search. So um, cancel it. And is not one. Okay. And what is my other parameter? Oh, internal invoice ID. Oh, it should be doing that automatically. Right, right. So I'm going to search. And I have my results here. And I'm going to pick a couple of these multi item ones just so I can show you batch receiving. So we'll pick those three, I'm pretty sure they're in the same series. And I'm going to add these to my invoice. And then as you can see, it updates that to exclude those line items. That's what that those new search parameters are doing. They're excluding the line items that I just added from the below search results. So if you want to keep adding things, you can. But back here are my invoice items. Um, and then I have the batch receive tab here. And this uh, kind of collapsed um, numeric and list mode. So I'm going to expand everything here with the expand all and show you how that works. So you can either, you know, you can select everything and receive all of it. You can select individual line items, which will select all of the things underneath it. You can select numeric. So let's say I got one of those. I don't really care which one it was. Um, let's say I got one of these and I do care which one it was. So those are and you can see that that incremented here as well. So those are all of my receipts, things that I'm going to mark receive, and I'm going to receive selected items. And then return here, and it's going to show me that, I, ah, that I have a bug. <laughs> okay, receive selected line items. All right, that should have received the other things too. So this is going to show me I have both line items received. This is showing me that I have one received. Um, and this is showing me that I have one received, which I did um, via, respectively, via the, um, just the numeric, which is picked the first one on the list, and then via the list where I selected the specifically this second copy with ACK 779. So that's showing me my receivings and, you know, if we can invoice this as, as appropriate um, for what we want to pay. And let's see, for new invoice from purchase order. Um, can, can I ask a quick question before you go there? Sure. <laughs> um, do you know if there's any um, difference in behavior for the, in the search tab, the limit to invoiceable items? Um, you... I don't know if it's a bug or because I've never bothered looking. Um, but I never get any results when I have it ticked, the limit to invoiceable items ticky box. So I just always have it unticked. So I mm. didn't know if there was a change in behavior or not. Um, nope. I mean, okay. it seems to be working. Okay. Um, might... I can see that it's, in this case, not obviously changing the results, but you know, this is a big result set. 
I think we've seen issues with it on uh, the current system too, Tiffany. Okay. We don't tend to recommend libraries use search because um, it's not super, or it hasn't been, at least in the Dojo interface, super reliable for us. Okay. It looks much yeah. prettier here. Um, question about this interface, the set as default line item search, is that unique to the invoices or does that affect the actual line item search as well? Uh, that's a good question. I have not tested it <clears throat> and I do not know. I would be tempted to rename that button to something a little different if it is unique to the sure. invoice search. I can test that and, you know, a button renaming is pretty, pretty straightforward. So I will test that and find out. Awesome. Thank you, Andrew. Mm -hmm. um, let me check the chat here. Yeah, I was going to say, you had a question in chat. Oh, um, that I also don't know. So let's experiment. Um, how about I pick a payment method? Check. And let's see. Since we've only received one of these, let's only invoice one of them. Okay. So I made two changes. And now I'm going to click on this. See, so yeah, well, it gives you that. Does that help? Um, it gives you this, you have unsaved changes. Do you want to navigate away link? So that will at least keep you from, to, it at least warn you that you're going to do that. Um, if I open in a new link, you know, it just sort of open it in a new link there. Um, does that answer your question, Eva? So it doesn't, I would imagine if you clicked through that, yes, you would probably lose your unsaved information, but at least it tells you, hey, you've got unsaved information, don't leave. So. Did we just open those in a new window by default? I don't normally advocate for that, but here it's- I was going to say, <laughs> no, I can't believe I I'm know. hearing this from you. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, I'll look. And, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, are we missing the purchase order link? No, you are not. It, um, as I say, because I'm not seeing it on the line items. It is. It is in the title. So when I clicked on, and this is me, by the way, this is me middle clicking. So I am opening this in a new tab intentionally. Uh -huh. That takes me to this line item here. And then if you click return, it puts it puts you in the purchase order. But there is an I know an open bug about changing that, that, where's my invoice? Changing this link to just go directly to the purchase order at the line item. Like, so to and take you to like wherever, like here, or take you to this point in the purchase order. So yeah, and, it doesn't, it's just clicking on the, on the title now mm -hmm. does that and for you. Tiffany, does the current one also link to the selection list? Because I feel think it, like I think it you does. get a purchase order and a selection list link currently if you I use selection like lists. That. Yeah. And this may be um since you said you guys are still like bug fixing mm -hmm. and you have a open open um uh bug or whatever, um, I would advocate for there being not the title because the the standard behavior like in a purchase order, when you click the title is exactly what's happening now, you know, you get like mm -hmm. the, what, what it's doing now. So mm -hmm. I would necessarily wouldn't want to change the behavior in invoices. I want it to be consistent. I'd rather have, you know, like on the invoices, especially because the link on for the purchase order right now on invoices, you see the name of the purchase, order, mm -hmm. which a lot of people use, you know, to distinguish things. So and I you think that's take happen. that back to Ruth, but this was something that we had discussed in testing and that, you know, ECDI had been in favor of the change. So hopefully that wasn't me. I was, <laughs> gonna say, I, I'm, I was I'm trying to not put it to 
bluntly, but yes, this was a change that apparent that was I, I thought was approved by ECDI testers. So uh I will say that, I mean, I know we're part of the partner testing, but with the timing of it, with our upgrade, I don't think anybody from the co-op has had time to look. And we all are different. So yeah. what, what my opinion could be, you know, well, I, I agree put with it you, in Tiffany. Differently, so. We'll so, I mean, take that, a that look could and be, see uh, what we can do. Yeah. But again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was all I had. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, one of the last things I'm going to show you is um, to create an invoice with purchase order prices. So this will give you a new invoice and it pulls over um, just this with the purchase order prices are everything already filled in there. Um, so that's, that's handy too. And like the... Um, provider information and the receiver and all this just auto auto filled from the from the purchase order so that's cool and i know that this is this is weird that's also on the list um that and it's it, it's a corresponding thing up at the top um and i will note that in this case it only pulls over the two unpaid copies yes yes i know so like there was one copy that was already invoiced on this line item and there is already an invoice so saved with this purchase order. So when I do the create purchase order, it only pulls over the two um, uninvoiced items and that is intentional. So, um, but, but uh, oh, other things, um, acquisitions, the general search, um, general line item search which actually here, we can test this now. Let's let's pretend that this is our set as default search. And then let's go to general search and see what it does. Hush. Um, and the answer is yes, it does carry that over. I can't remember if that was bugged or not. So it really is literally setting the default line item search um, that will be used mm -hmm. either in invoices or in line items. So the button does not lie, whether that's um, the behavior that the final behavior is, is TBD. So I, I, you have I thoughts think, about that? I was gonna say, I think long-term it would make sense to have them separate because I think your default line item search through general and your default search in the invoice are probably going to be different. Okay, and that's fair. But um, for now, is that a deal breaker yeah. to have them be the same? I don't think it's a deal breaker. Okay. Because this was like component reuse in the interest of, of mm -hmm. efficiency, obviously. So um, I do want to highlight that the um, their uh, invoice actions are now available here as well from the line item search. So you can... Um, Whereas before, when in, in the Dojo version, that was still not fully functional. Those are there now. Mm -hmm. And then the stepchild of this is claims. Because in addition I, to invoices, this also we also did claims. Sorry, did you have something else that you wanted sorry, to ask about? Sorry, I just have before? one more um, invoice. Well, actually, sorry, two more invoice questions. Um, can we see the top of an invoice again? Yeah. Uh, So that's a closed invoice. Um, and where do the EDI messages show up if you're doing it via EDI? That's a very good question. Um, I don't think that we had anybody test EDI uh, with an EDI on this. So I would have to ask where those go unless Stephanie I'm not, wants you know off the top of your head. I was going to say, I'm not entirely sure how it displays currently, but I... Yeah, uh, we have not changed that, so... So that it might would, be a bug for future development. So whatever it does, wherever it displays now is likely where it displays here, but maybe not pretty. <laughs> yeah. um, that would my, be a good thing to test. Um, and my other question is, is there a bug around the new invoice button? Because 
the I, I I'm not sold on it being in the middle of the pro rate close open and save options because it's there's not a bug about that look no because um, those three apply to the existing invoice while new invoice takes you to something completely new yeah it's the, basically a repeat of the save and close or the oh excuse me yeah yeah uh save and whatever save and clear yeah save and clear um i don't think we actually rearrange those buttons from where they are now like i but i'd have to yeah. go look at the dojo that makes sense but i and i really like the renaming of the button but i think with the renaming well and if you hit new invoice does it save your existing invoice Yes, but it's yeah. save and new is what that acts as. Yeah. Um, Cause yeah, I would advocate for it to either be at the beginning or the end of the row instead of in the middle. Sure, we can take that under consideration. I know that's really tiny. <laughs> Thank you, no, Andrea. That's a good point. And um, to answer Deborah's question, um, what upgrade that is uh, TBD. Uh, this is, I'd love to see this uh, in the run-up for 312, but it's big and there's a lot, I would expect a lot of, just like you guys had a lot of comments and, you know, I say this with love nitpicks. I expect that other people in the community will also have very valid nitpicks like you guys did. Um, I'd love to see it in 312 for this fall. I do not expect to see it until the spring. Um, and my, those of you who have worked with me on dev for years know that my standard party line is we never guarantee any specific upgrade because we don't have direct control of that. Um, that is that is where it becomes a community process. And we always do our very best by like getting feedback from our customers, feedback from you guys, um, which we're going to incorporate to make sure that this is, is in as good a community state as it can be. But the runway for 312 is very short at this point and i would be pleasantly surprised if it made it in for 312 and to anticipate the follow-up question this is not something that is back portable so um there's that as well that makes a lot of sense i would yeah. be terrified for this to be back ported <laughs> yeah i just it is I, I almost always have somebody ask about any major feature can this be back ported i'm like well you can start you can certainly try. <laughs> We're not <Yeah>. better. <laughs> and I will throw out. Oh, I'm sorry. Go. Ahead. I'm just going to throw out really quickly since we've had this um, backporting conversation a couple of times about recent things that there is kind of a, a user interface line between 310 and 311. Yes. It makes it very difficult to backport things uh, past 311. Yeah. So that requires a lot of extra attention to nitpicky UI things because of the major bootstrap upgrade that we did in that version. Yeah. Um, so think about that when you're um, kind of planning development around backports. <laughs> there's, yeah. There's a, there's a wall there. Or if you have a local sysadmin that's, um, that, that does, that has, you know, made it their standard to backport features, there is kind of a hard barrier between 3.10 and 3.11. Um, because that Angular update, like Stephanie said, for anything that touches an Angular interface. So if that's something that is part of your regular update schedule, you know, just be aware that if you're used to doing custom backports of stuff, that that there's that's going to be more difficult to cross that line. Only in Angular, though. It doesn't matter. Only in Angular. Yes, for Angular. And it looks so much better in 3.11. The, I think the changes are fantastic. Thank you. Uh, the legacy um, invoice is still available, even with this, right? It's still available in this test system. Um, I guess it is a mat. I mean, it's not. We have not deprecated any of that interface. Um, like the standard procedure would be just to kind of remove that old link um for claim ready and legacy in the in the branch but that could certainly be a matter of community debate um if they wanted to leave them there um the, the only reason i was asking and maybe you know like how much underlying stuff 
uh, you know, like in the pearl and things like that, this changes or whether it's like mostly angular, because like, I know sometimes we do, you know, basically like experimental uh, that it goes into, you know, a big release, like how we did purchase orders where they weren't the default yet. And so then a lot of things got ironed out to where, you know, in point releases or whatever. Um, but we're going to 312 in the spring and I'm greedy. So that's the only reason I'm mentioning this. <laughs> that's the only reason I'm advocating for it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not certain what the plan is for this. That's something I would actually want to talk to Ruth about to get a sense of her opinion because we didn't really say one way or the other. Um, this was mostly, to answer your question about Pearl, this was mostly interface work. There are a few places where like API calls were massaged and like old bugs were sort of squashed along the way. But the majority of this is just a new front end on the same stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we left these two legacy interfaces up for comparison purposes during testing, but we didn't like gut them. Like they're, they're still there and they're, they're hideous dojo-ness. You know, you can still see, um, you know, still operate within them. And if you create an invoice here, you can see it in Angular and vice versa, um, you know. So yeah. that would, I guess, be a matter for community. I, I mean, I would want to get Ruth's opinion on that, but um, it'd be a matter for community debate. And of course, like you guys at Pines, you could certainly relabel these menu items, right? Like you could make these, put these as experimental and put the new one as experimental and put the old one as, as the preferred one. Yeah. Like, cause I think that's what we did like with purchase orders. Like we took it out of the menu, but like yeah. on the purchase order, you know, we had like the little view in legacy or whatever. I, yeah. I don't remember that purchase orders was experimental in May that, or if that was a, you guys thing. Well, I don't, uh, sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> um, I, I don't think it was like experimental. It was basically like it went in, but like when we actually started testing for our upgrade, it was like little nitpick things that like needed to get mm -hmm. ironed out. So like it was, it was good. It was like the main thing, but like some people, um, not necessarily us, but I think other um, systems, they couldn't like go full on, you know, straight to Angular. Right. PO and and the PO had you know, show PO and legacy interface, like that is still there. Yeah. That might be what you're thinking of. Um, and yeah. like, there's this legacy create invoice link here. Um, so that would seem to me that the Jason's intent here was to leave those legacy links, but that I do not, I'd have to check with um, Ruth. And that would certainly be something that, again, because we didn't do anything to the old interfaces, I, there's no reason why we couldn't leave those links there if, people wanted to and didn't think they were confusing you know yeah well like you said it's it's a community thing I I just was curious you know if it's all interface stuff then that could be possible but like yeah. there's a lot of underlying stuff where dojo doesn't work anymore you know that's not really on the table then no I mean but dojo is going to continue to break in weird ways because honestly like as we're we make changes to those underlying bits of code even if they're little changes like they're made with the angular interfaces in mind so right. you know as whenever there's a new in production Angular interface, like it's always the the clock is always ticking for Dojo, um. So you know, I would say that that there's there's good arguments to be made on either side for that, and I would honestly toss that to the community. I don't think Ruth is still here, um, and I'd you know see if she and the ECDI membership had a strong opinion about that one way or the other. So. But you, you answered my original question, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. And and related to that, Andrea, um, does this development kind of finish off all of the bits that were missing from acquisition search, which is part of the reason why we had the link to the legacy search? Should It should, yes, because I believe the last pieces from legacy search were those invoice pieces, but I would have to go back and look this mm -hmm. acquisitions has been so long and spun off <laughs> into so many like pieces that I'm afraid to say yes. Cause I, without checking my. Well, that's why I asked hundreds of I was, pages like, of notes. I couldn't remember either. 
my recollection is that this was about specific actions like I was actions say, I think receiving for purchase orders and stuff right like break like, but it was the purchase order invoicing actions because this came first this act search came mm-hmm. first before purchase orders before invoices obviously so this was the legacy search link was about giving people a route to those actions and i believe mm-hmm. that the invoice should take care of all the remaining actions um yeah it was partly receiving and canceling but there was also add to invoice which wasn't um so you know i don't i don't think that this these invoice actions were available yet in search until now i'd have to go back and double check but yeah and then the receive uh cancel etc this all came with um the purchase orders and selection list stuff um but I would have to go back and compare. Um, Cause if it does, it would be, I would be tempted to um, uh, to maybe propose removing that link or having the option to remove that link with the invoicing functionality coming in if it's no longer really needed. Well, I, you know, I, I must there's admit, that. I, I, and I then try there's... to push our libraries away from using old stuff once the new stuff works. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But <laughs> yeah. The, the... This is going to sound very cynical. Um, no, no, go for it. Nothing, nothing tests softer like real world use. Yeah. Um, I would say that that link quietly hiding there in the upper corner should stay there and till we're and is it just my imagination or did this used to be in the upper right corner i think it used to be in the upper right corner yeah that might yeah, be one of there were a few things with the bootstrap upgrade that that hopped uh over anyway i would i would advocate leaving that there until this has seen some production use just in case and then we can always like it's dead easy to hide a link um fair enough just in case <laughs> just in case because that was the reason that went in there and I would want to make sure that there wasn't some edge case and like acquisitions as you all know is full of edge cases it's one of the reasons why this project has taken so long like so many years um is because there's just so many different ways to do acquisitions to go through the process um yeah the developing for them has been has been time consuming so that would be you know, I, I agree with you. Yes, that that should go away. Um, I would maybe say not with this, but in the next release. Because so one of the things behind this work that ECDI has funded and separate work that King County Library System has funded in places like the Mark Editor and some um, lesser used uh, old interfaces like uh, Link Checker and um, Custom Org Unit Trees is, is really like getting those last corners of dojo eliminated so that we can for realsies start as a community deprecating and then eventually removing that actual code um for those old interfaces so this is all like there is like a master plan here um you know to get all of those dojo interfaces to finally and permanently go away um but you know until we're real, real sure that we don't need them. Like it is very low cost to leave links like that there. I think I'm talking myself around to advocating for leaving the legacy links in for invoices and claims too, is the upshot here. <laughs> so I tend to agree just because our testing can't encompass all of the things that y'all do in real life. And I don't want to take away the f- screens that wor- we know work as buggy as they are. Um, and leave you without a safety net to get your work done yeah exactly well said um okay any other invoice um questions before i real quick show you claims
So this is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, you can select all, some, et cetera, et cetera, um, and mark them as claimed. And if you do so, you will get the option to initiate new claims, take your claim type. Um, why is this being so sluggish? Of course, because I'm doing a demo probably. <laughs> anyway, pick your claim type and et cetera, claim note. Oh, apparently I'm in caps lock. Um, and do that. And then this should very slowly generate the print preview. Yep. Sorry, I'm not sure why this is so slow. Um, I'm pretty sure this is my country internet at work. There's always <laughs> something when you're presenting that's oh, yes. so that's slow. What I was gonna say. It knows <laughs> that you're presenting. <laughs> uh -huh. I've been there. <laughs> Ever since the catastrophic web client demo at the Covington conference, which some of you probably were in the audience for, um, I just can't let it bother me anymore. That one bothered me a lot. Actually, wait, is she here? I thought I saw Mary Llewellyn gets my eternal and undying love for being so kind during that Mary was sitting in like, and I'm sorry if I'm embarrassing you, Mary, but this really is one of like, it was a very positive moment in what was otherwise a disastrous presentation for me. Um, she was like in the second row and just kept asking me like really gentle, like easy questions that I could answer without having to do something with the demo. And Mary, like you totally saved my bacon and kept me from crying in front of a room full of my colleagues that day. I don't know if you know that, but everyone, you know, give Mary some oh, love for, for being a kind person. Oh, shucks. <laughs> so <laughs> this is all true. This is a true story, you guys. Anyway, look, hey, the print preview finally rendered thanks to country internet. Um, and so you can see that these were, these are my claims and, you know, you can print that out. I'm not going to print it out to my printer several rooms away. Um, and yeah, this will refresh and take those off of this list. And they are now gone. So anyway, so that is claims. Um, again, that was a sort of a straightforward re-implementation of that um, and much less interesting than invoices, but it was technically a part of this work. It was invoice and claims um, and it squashed a few uh, bugs with claims that I can't, of course, off the top of my head remember them. So despite I my nitpicky questions, it looks fantastic, Andrea. Great. Thank you. And thank you for your nitpicks, because okay. those are all things that um, I'm going to take the list that Stephanie has kindly assembled, and we're going to look at these and see which ones we can squeeze into the last round of bug fixing for this. So, um, like I said, I will... Oh, I really, 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 really want this to be in 3.12. I really do not think the community will be able to give it enough attention to um, get it there, though. But we'll see. Well, if it can live side by side with the legacy interfaces, then maybe yeah. we can pick it as an experimental one, just as yep. speculation is in right now. Sure. That, well, I wouldn't want to call it experimental. Well, no. Because it's but... way more fully fleshed out than circulation. Circulation yeah. is like missing large chunks of features. <laughs> um, well, yes. Acquisitions with a backup? Backquisitions. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Um, um, I have a question on claims real quick. And sure. I don't use claims at all. So this is probably super obvious. Um, on the claim items, the claim this button, that just means claim all the copies that are on that line item, right? It All the on. So this one has two received. So only one is available for claiming. Let me... Um, let me find one here. This one has none received. So claim this. Yep. And it gives you the option to do one or whatever of those. So okay. that's, you can see that. So those are the barcodes act seven, 16, seven, 17, seven, 18. Oh, and look now that, now that it's, this modal has been loaded before it's cached and my country internet will actually show it to you. Um, right. We tried to give people, it seems like there's a lot of different um, 
ways to do things and there is, and that's intentional. Cause again, there's so many different ways that people use acquisitions that we like didn't want to, it. it's why that there's, you know, select all items, select all items and page. And then there's select boxes here and here and here and like all the places and there's buttons and there's buttons. It is to kind of give people flexibility. Um, and yes, I can tell you that Stephanie's comment is 1000% accurate. If we had unlimited time and money, you know, so I definitely um, have to drop the hammer on developer nitpicks on a fairly regular basis. So if you want to blame anybody for why everything isn't perfect, you can really blame me because if I let them, they would keep working on everything until it was perfect and nothing would ever get done. So it's all my fault, you guys. But That's I a do. good thing because <laughs> otherwise we wouldn't have anything. Otherwise nothing. So look. <laughs> You guys, most of you guys know me pretty well. And I will always say, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Um, and it sometimes seems like I'm being flippant about people's nitpicks, but I'm not. Um, but, you know, what I, my point is more that, like, get things out there, get people to test them, keep improving them. Um, you know, and I do very much appreciate the nitpicks um, from workflow experts, um, like when I take things to the cataloging group or to you guys, because I am not. A workflow expert. I am not an acquisitions expert. Uh, Jason is not an acquisitions expert. Stephanie is not an acquisitions expert. So we do really sincerely appreciate your nitpicks, even if I can't promise to fix all of them, because you guys are the ones that know how these things work in a real world setting. So, and when Ruth asks you for testers, be testers for her if you can, because that is also helpful. Anything great. else? Any other questions? Um, can you tell who my three favorite fiction authors are because of the, all the data in the system is like four. It's it's Terry Pratchett, Neil Gaiman, Garth Nix, and Naomi Novik because I loaded all of the selection lists. I loved the um, the Shakespeare one where it was like proud invoices. Oh really yeah, like, that was just yeah. me making making things up. Yes, Ill yeah, Met like by Moonlight, one. proud invoices. Yeah, I really like that one. Oh, yes. Uh, plug for the user interest group. If you want to nitpick buttons and colors and contrast, and actually um, Stephanie has a evil plan to change uh, the in the acquisitions highlighting to be something that is actually um, uh, what sort I'm looking for accessible as opposed to what it is now, which is, hold on, um, I'm going to... Oh, the line item colors. The yes. line item colors. I'm yeah. working on the line item color scheme as we... Which are currently these. And there's a lot of like, what's the difference between medium gray and light gray? <laughs> like in medium pink and light pink. If you saw those, you know, in isolation, you wouldn't. Um, no. And and there's a bug for this somewhere in Launchpad that has yeah. a screenshot. I, t I put this table into a color blindness simulator and you cannot tell the difference between like four of them. Yeah. So... We will be redoing those, and I I know that that probably will not be a popular change because everyone is used to these colors. Yeah, but um, they gotta go. Sorry. <laughs> and they also need indicators on non color, more more bold non color indicators. Right. We have to we have to use something other than color to convey differences in meaning. So we'll be working on things like uh like a border edge style that's different. Um, something something besides just color yeah see if okay. I let if I if I let her do unlimited work which I'm never going to do Stephanie would rewrite the entire uh angular staff client and everything would be beautiful and um you ux friendly and you know accessibility friendly um we will get there slowly one thing at a time Andrea reminds me that I do need to sleep occasionally yeah, and like, you know, I don't know, see people other than us. How how dare you? I know. You could... I'm the worst. <laughs> I told you it's all my fault. Come on. <laughs> but yes, well, no, and to Ruth's point, yes, some people are colorblind. And that is like pretty much everything we have been trying to do from here on. We by which I mean Equinox, and I'm really happy that the larger African community has um people like I know that Pines has commissioned accessibility studies. I know that um, 
Jane Sandberg has done a lot of accessibility work, but kind of for us, now that we have our own in-house accessibility expert, basically, we're not going to be putting out any more interfaces that are inaccessible in as much as we can help it, unless it, you know, is something like we're halfway through acquisitions and we got to rewrite the color table. Um, as much as possible, we are trying to live the words that Stephanie wrote into her accessibility guides um, for accessibility for developers guide, which is, you know, if you more or less in a here, I'm very much paraphrasing, but if you do it right the first time, you know, you don't have to go back and fix it to make it accessible. Like if you design from the start with accessibility I and mean, we've really been making a concerted effort to do that with all of our new interface development, so. Yeah, and even more so in the newer projects that we're starting, the ones that were contracted before I got here, like this one, we make limited changes. Yeah, we, we've done our best with the time that was allocated. So also if you're getting quotes from me that are higher higher time than they used to be, that's part of why. Um, it's part of because, you know, this is this is extra time. Um, but, you know, we think it's good for the project and um, a valuable thing to be doing if we're touching these interfaces anyway. And I'm sure some of you have heard from funders and state governments, like this is not going to, these requirements are not going away. And in fact, they're going to get more stringent. So publicly funded institutions are going to be on the hook for this kind of stuff. So we want to make sure that, that we're working towards that, at least in the US. I will admit that I do not have a clear grasp on EU and, and Canada versions of this. I am so. attending a webinar tomorrow on updated Canadian requirements, so. All right. Okay. Um, I know we're at the hour. I'm sorry, it took up your whole hour. Um, that's okay. I think that's um, way more interesting than talking about bugs, honestly. So I'm glad you did. <laughs> well, we still kind of talked about bugs, um, True. you know, bugs um, here. Well, thank you for showing us. I think that's awesome. And I really like, uh, even though I did test it, I still still think it's super useful to like have somebody walk through it. So I, I really appreciate you coming and showing us. So, yeah. Of course. Um, I'm happy to do so. And thank you for all your great and very detailed feedback. Um, we will do what we can with that. And um, did anybody really desperately want to see something that they didn't get to see before before we adjourn? I think from the thank yous, everybody's okay. gonna gonna go for the day. <laughs> oh, cool. So thank you. We really appreciate you coming. Um, I will say. Um, for the bugs that I do have, there's not a lot of them. I would encourage folks to go look at them just because I think most of them aren't confirmed yet. So if you wanted to take a look at the ones that I pulled out, that would be good. So, but I'm not gonna go over them because let's get out of here. Um, so um, Tiffany, yeah. so I was just gonna flag the line item alert types not scoping in a purchase order. I uh -huh. can't sign off on it because Jeff wrote the fix, but we oh, will okay. be going live with that fix next week. Oh, okay. Um, cool. So if anybody has the time to test as far as, as far as what we've seen, it works. Um, but yeah, I can't sign off on it because we wrote it. Okay, cool. Um, I will attempt to look at that, but if somebody beats me to it, please do. <laughs> so, okay. All right. Next meeting is next month. Um, I will see you guys then. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye everyone. All right. Thanks. Thanks very much, Tiffany. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Andrea. Thank you. Bye.